so the movie has a lot of tributes. A tribute to great television series is one mm. of them. A tribute to, you know, film noir is one of them. To the 70s. Yeah. Is it part of the pleasure when you're kind of revisiting all those themes? Uh, I think so. I think there's a certain nostalgia that, that is easy to kind of tap into because they're, they're you know, you get nostalgic about them for a reason. There's something about them that touched you in some way, so they get to revisit them, whether it's a time period or, you know, a character named John Boy. I guess there's something, you know, inherently fun about that. Well, you know the entertainment industry so well in Los Angeles at the moment. How do you mm -hmm. feel it's changed since the 70s, where things were completely different? The technology was different, social media. Um, the entertainment industry yeah. in general? Well, as in um, well, I think there's been really incredible advancements. The fact that people can make movies on iPhones now, I think, is pretty incredible because so many artists are getting to voice their stories. But I think, you know, and, and maybe that will lead to us having a time more like the 70s but so many of my favorite movies that were greenlit at studio in the 70s they just don't make anymore so much of it yeah. now is more branded entertainment so i'm ac actually extra proud to be a part of a movie like this that's a really original story uh, with a singular voice in cinema uh of shane black and and um and uh you know isn't just about people in tights and capes saving people it's a, it's an original story about real flawed human beings and it's you know funny and, and, and dramatic and scary and all those fun things. And absolutely, and it's been great for you because you have been able to explore very different characters, even physically. I mean, you mm. know, talk about how different this is from Magic Mike and from the television series mm. and all these things. How interesting is it for you at the moment that you're kind of stretching the acting exercise in different ways completely? I, lo I mean, I was so excited to get to play a baddie who was this cold-blooded because, yeah. you know, you're always your character's defense attorney and you're trying to find ways to humanize them and, and figure get inside their head and figure out why they're doing what they do no matter how merciless it may seem and um and you know just the, the chance to get to paint with different colors i mean that's that's why i wanted to become an actor i never wanted to do the same thing over and over again i wanted to really get to mix it up and i feel very blessed that shane black and joel silver really gave me the opportunity to do something this different his name is Dr. Malik. Where did that come from? Because that's uh, Lebanese, isn't it? Or something. His name's John Boy, yeah. but his, his alias that he goes yes, by yes, to yes, visit yes. the ladies, uh, you remember that um, he, they're told they're going to send in the family exactly. doctor to attend to her. Uh, and and his, his alias, his front, is, is Dr. Malik. Yeah, <laughs> probably yeah. inspired from reality TV or something like that. Maybe. You have to ask Shane about that one. <laughs> Um, uh, when you're working with actors, how much does it change your perception of them, you know? Um, I think when you're working with really iconic actors like Russell and Ryan, who are, are you know, two of the best we have right now, um, you know, you can't help but have expectations of them, uh, personally and professionally. I've seen every movie they've done. And the fact that they exceed those expectations both personally and professionally, I think says a lot about who they are. Um, they were a dream to get to work with, and I and I learned so much watching them. And um, they're brilliant in this movie. Their their comedy is just so. Uh, their ki chemistry, I should say, is really so inherent and and not forced. It's not pushed in your face. It's just really funny and natural, and it's almost symbiotic. Like they couldn't, one character couldn't be as zany as he is without the other character being as grounded as he is and he couldn't be as dry as he is if the other character weren't as zany and so um it was just really fun to watch them play yeah i mean i think everybody's comedic timing was on point I yeah mean, as well and Guri, everybody kind of fit in that symbiotic that you mentioned. yeah I, I hope so i mean shane's writing is so vivid and unique and 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 it was really fun to get to work on so had you watched uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang or Ali Confidential or Gangster Squad? Of course, Squad? of course. I think you mean, oh, oh yes, and Gangster yeah. Squad and Monster Squad, which, yes, which Shane also wrote from my childhood. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'd seen pretty much, I mean, I'm sure there's some things Joel Silver's made that I haven't seen just because he's made, he's so prolific. Yeah. But uh, I think I've seen pretty much everything everybody's done in this group of incredible creatives. I would have totally seen you in The Matrix, actually, now that you mentioned oh. that. <laughs> I'd love that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much of a cinema fan are you yourself? Do you kind of, uh, you know, is it your date night kind of thing to do? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I love the cinema. As a kid, I was it was pretty restricted in my home, like what I could see. So once I became an adult and could see whatever I wanted, I, I just went hog wild. And I'm still getting caught up and, and immersing myself in so many different periods and genres and filmmakers. And, and there's I have a lot of catching up to do still, but I, I do just love cinema.